Let's go back to our top story. And for the second day, the elderly in Mangaung in the Free State have not been able to be vaccinated for COVID-19. That's a service delivery protest continue in the metro. A group calling itself the Mangaung Community Concern wants the local council disbanded. They have taken their fight for running water, functioning toilets and adequate housing to the streets. For a second day, as I was saying, let's discuss this then with the Free State's Cooperative Governance MEC, Tembe Ningangisa, who's joining us, I believe, from Bloemfontein. MEC, grateful for your time. First things first, a bit of confusion tonight about whether the shutdown in Mangaung continues or not. Does it? MEC, may I ask you please to unmute? Yes, yeah, sir. Thank you very much, uh, Tembekile Mkokoto, and thanks to your viewers and the opportunity you are granting us. First, we wish to pass our deepest condolences to a grade seven learner who is 15 years, Chivano Liam Sikhel, who passed on as a result of some of the activities that took place in the past two days. The Premier uh, is leading an entourage to the family to pass condolences and support the family even on the barrier. The second issue is that the Premier raised a very strong message, but also a welcoming message to the team of Mangaung Concern Community for responding to the call and coming to a meeting together to discuss a number of issues, which was their concerns and part of the memorandum they presented. And throughout that deliberations, it came out clear that there's an intention of us working together to save Mangaung and improve conditions in Mangaung. And it also showed that there's men and women brave enough to take up social issues that affect communities. And in particular, mm -hmm. there were issues around uh, service delivery in Mangaung, which to a large extent was appalling. There were issues around access to business because the community around there felt uh, very much alienated from business opportunities around. And the other issue was the functionality of the municipality, where they felt very strongly that the city manager in particular is relating with them in an unfair and dishonest manner. So we agreed all these issues are not insurmountable. We can attend to them. Hence, we agreed that there will be a team that will be led by myself, working with the uh, uh, members of the Mangaung Consent uh, Committee, uh, community, and that team will monitor the implementation of issues we have agreed on. Let me see. That we agreed on, amongst others, is that immediately the issue of the city manager of Mangaung, the council will be sitting on Thursday and will be agreeing to take an immediate suspension. However, in any case, sorry, the Mangaung has agreed to investigate the city manager. And Let me ask you this, MEC. Apologies for jumping in here. We're very limited on time. Does the shutdown continue or not on Wednesday? Because when we spoke to our reporter, Slinda Lomasikane, who's in Bloemfontein tonight, the community had not reached a decision. So did they give you a commitment that they'd call off the strike? Yeah, the shutdown is suspended. And the, the, a number of issues were agreed on and uh, we are working with them to monitor the implementation of those issues. So the shutdown is suspended. Mangaung from tonight, we have agreed that they must mop up and clear all roads. Kids can go to school tomorrow. People can go to work tomorrow. And all that needs to get their medication can still go to medication and get their medication. Mortuaries can function. People can apply for death certificate. So we are back to normal from tonight as agreed. Let's talk so, about the issues then, MEC, because on the issue of a collapse of services and infrastructure, you've got situations uh, in Bloemfontein where areas are left without consistent refuse removal. You've got roads that are falling apart where it's no longer even a pothole where there was tar. You now have a dirt road. You've got people who are saying to you they no longer feel safe at night. Why have you allowed, as the Free State Government, the Mangaung Metro, the capital of the province, to collapse in such a way as far as service delivery is concerned? It's true. Mangaung has not been functioning well, and that's why there's an intervention in the form of Section 139, Subsection 5, 
A and C. It is as a result of realizing the deteriorating situation in Mangaung, because Mangaung was not able to provide services to the people in line with the constitutional stipulation of section of, of the constitution, section 152 and section 153, where it articulates clearly the functionality of the municipality. So Mangaung was failing, and that's why there's an intervention to try to help them to provide services to the people, to raise revenue, to be able to finance programs, operational programs of the, of, of the municipality, mm -hmm. to reinvest conditional grants because they were used for operation instead of the purpose they intended for. So that's the intervention, and we are on the right track now to get Mangaum back, collect refuse, and ensure that they fill all the potholes that we, 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 we have in our roads and risk filling the road so that people have their lives back. So we are now confident and we are ready to bring Mangaung back and we are working closely with Mangaung concerned community. But there'll be and people, let me see, again, apologies, there'll be people who don't believe you because you look at a situation where one of the main roads, Mushesha Road, for, I'll give you that example, has been under construction for two years. Whenever you go back to Bloemfontein, instead of that road showing progress for, uh, where construction is concerned, it's not getting better. The metro has been under administration since 2019. Do you acknowledge that that process has pretty much at this point been useless because nothing has actually improved in an almost two-year period? No. <clears throat> the metro was in administration 2019-24 December on Christmas Eve, and barely it's a year and some few months, which is not an issue. But a year but is still a very long time. What has that year done for the people of Mangaung? Because we sit here tonight after two days of protests. Okay. Now, immediately after the intervention, there were terms of reference. There were specific mandates to the team that was sent to Mangaung or to do three things. One the rescue of Mangaung, and two, stabilization of Mangaung, and three, the exit strategy. The, the, the rescue operation was carried out because the first thing was to create a sustainable Mangaung revenue strategy, which they did. That's why Mangaung is no longer using grants to pay operations. They've been able to save 10 million from an ever escalating over time's that Mangaung could not afford, which they did, was to restore the ability of Mangaung to pay its debt. They've been paid, paying consistently the DBSA, APSA, and Standard Bank. And they've been also able to pay their uh, account on water, on bulk water with Blue Mode. They've stopped being to court day in and day out with Blue Mode. Now, Mangaung has been able to adopt a financially recovery plan, which the team is implementing to ensure that on the finances, the municipality is stable. Mm -hmm. Two, on the service delivery issues, which is the key element as well. That's why I'm saying they are resealing the roads. They have appointed some SMEs, SMEs to collect refuse from door to door. And there's a program now to reclaim Mangawung, which was led by the acting mayor Moraki. That was ensuring that there's cutting of grass throughout the area. We have not made a serious dent because it is only now that we are getting Mangaum back into track. Okay. So the progress that is notable is there. It might not be everything we wanted to do, but at least we see the light at the end of the tunnel. You had a shocking debt to Bloom Water, which, supply, which supplies bulk water, as you've just referenced. You had at some point agreed on a sum of 715 million rand, which from December was expected to be repaid in installments of 20 million rand. How much of that debt has Mangaung now paid? What I can safely say is that the debt has been reduced if to that seven, it from 1.4 billion. It's reduced to 700 million you are speaking about. And Mangaon now is keeping to monthly payment plus paying the interest. That's why I'm saying we are now confident that Mangaon is on the right track. And that's why you don't see them on the news with blue motor time and again. So Mangaon now is supplying uninterrupted uh, supply of water. But you know there are 
continuous uh, pipe best that they are attending, they are now responding. So we agreed with Mangawun concerned residents that these issues that we are talking about are doable, are not insurmountable. We are together going to monitor the progress on them. And that's why they agreed then to suspend uh, the, 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 the shutdown, because they were also convinced that the work we are doing in Mangawun really does yield the results and their notable progress. Let me see. Let's see how long the truce between yourself and the people of Mangaung lasts. But for now, Free State Cooperative Governance MEC Tembeni Ngangisa, good to speak to you, sir. Thank you.